We are going to get ourselves started by just opening up the model file. Pop yourself on over there and let's take a look. And what I'm going to start with is just the whole issue of area and space planning, because that's really what you want to focus on for the second building. Okay. As we looked at the first building, you know, one that was created for phase one, you saw that this thing was already divided up into rooms. In the rooms, we had these different attributes for the occupancy and the department assigned to them. And we can sort of highlight things. Okay. We can also go ahead and create schedules. So let me just open up the room schedule that's in here. You can say the room schedule for phase one. And this will show you that for all the different rooms, the room numbers or the occupancies, the departments they're assigned to, the areas, and they're all subtotaled right now. So we can use the schedule and the plan in combination to really do a little bit of planning and see how we're doing against our space budgets. Okay? And that actually works out okay. Now, rooms is sort of a very powerful and easy way to go through and manage this information. Rooms have two disadvantages, though. The areas imported and reported in the room schedule aren't quite accurate because they don't include the space between the walls. It's just really to the face of the walls. So they're a little bit off. For a big plan project like this, in terms of just doing space planning, that may not be a huge consideration. When we're actually thinking about doing something where dollars are involved, yeah, it gets to be very critical how we're accounting for that space between the walls. Because it gets to be very significant. There could be hundreds and thousands of square feet lost between the walls. Okay, so rooms sort of have the problem that they're not quite accurate for computing area. The other problem they have is though that you have to go through and define rooms. You have to actually define walls. And you may want to go through and start thinking about how you're allocating space before the walls have actually been designed. Okay. And to help us do that, we're going to switch to a slightly different <coughs> concept called an area plan. So go on over to, say, level one, phase two. Let me zoom on out. What I'm going to do is let me, I'm going to just even shift the crop of my view. I'm going to pull it up so I'm not looking at the old building. I just really want to focus on the new building. And I'll crop that again. <coughs> so I'm just going to shift over so I'm looking at that building instead. Again, I'm at level one. I'm at phase two. Okay, and here we have the new building. There's no rooms defined right now. But I'd still like to start thinking about the area in that space. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to create something called an area plan. Okay, and let's show you where you find that. It's a special version of a floor plan. I go to the Home tab. I go way over to Room and Area. And if I click on that, you'll find something called an area plan. Okay, area plans are just a very special type of floor plan. They're like a floor plan, but they allow us to add these lines which separate the spaces into areas. Okay, then we can basically assign attributes to each of those areas, okay, just to do whatever sort of tabulation we need. And I can break things up so I can keep track of the area allocated to the different departments. I can keep do a setup uh, an area plan that shows sort of interior versus exterior spaces. I've had to do them before where we took a look at the building footprint versus the non-pervious exterior materials versus the pervious exterior materials because they needed to go through and compute basically how much area was going to be available for absorbing rainwater so we could figure out that I wasn't putting up too much water back into the storm sewer system. But area plans, you can set them up as soon as you need to sort of tabulate different types of areas. Think about using an area plan because it gives you a construct for contabulating areas that's independent of rooms. Okay, that's the big difference. Okay, so I'm going to choose area plan. It gives me a dialogue that looks like this. And the first big choice we have to worry about is, are we looking at the gross areas or the rentable areas? And let's talk about that ever so briefly. Okay, Most times, you will be looking at the gross building areas. And that is, you're going to put the lines in that sort of indicate where the boundaries of the rooms are. And very explicitly locate those things. It'll give you ref, uh, calculations based on that. Okay, Gross is generally what you're going to use. Rentable is an interesting concept. If you were a building manager and you were responsible for charging people rent on different spaces within the building, you'd want to go through and do a rentable plan. Okay. Rentable plan uses a, slight, it uses a special set of rules defined by its BOMA, which is like, it's the building, I always forget what the oh, main building operators and managers association, it's B-O-M-A. Okay. They've defined a special set of rules that really get to how we should charge for the space based on the uses of the spaces. 
So there's all these different funding rules. We'll illustrate them, but it makes a difference for them whether you're an office next to another office or whether you're an office next to a hallway or whether you're an office next to an exterior space. Because depending upon which of those conditions we're looking at, we'll move the line of how much space you're charged for. Okay, sometimes you split the cost of the area between the walls with the adjacent tenant. Sometimes the building manager has to take on that cost. Okay, but we'll show you that as part of a rentable plan next. Let's do a gross one first, because that's simpler. I'll say gross, I'll do it for level one. I'll say okay. I'm gonna say no to this, because I'm gonna go ahead and place them manually. I'm looking at now something <laughs> called an area plan. It's actually showing up in the project browser as an area plan for level one. It's a gross one. Okay. What do I do on an area plan? I go back over here to this tab and I choose an area boundary line because the area boundary line is where we go through and demark the different areas and subdivide. I am going to just grab the little drawing line. Come on down, draw some boundaries. probably getting closer so I can actually sort of see in some detail because we actually do care what layer we're coming to right now those are coming to the wall center line so let me try this oh I can even in here hang on but I want to try I'm going to try and move that to the outside boundary like that instead a l align move it to the outside boundary I'll come on down here and I'll keep on drawing. Again, we'll say area, area boundary. Continue drawing my lines. Now, area boundary lines, it turns out, aren't nearly as fussy as those pink lines, which we usually uh, get involved with when we're doing sketching. Kay. Area boundaries are actually somewhat forgiving. They don't always have to match up perfectly. In fact, even in that corner there, I can see that, let me zoom with a bit. I can see that it didn't quite match there. That should be okay. I think it's gonna not really care a whole lot about that. Let me crop this view again. Okay, what I will do now is I'll take an area object, I'll put it in the middle, drop one in there. And what you'll see is that there's 7,275 square feet on that level. Okay, We can go ahead and give that level a name. Instead of calling it area, let me just call it unallocated. Beautiful. Okay. <coughs> Now, the nice thing about areas is we can start at the high level and say there's 7275 here, but we can start subdividing that up very easily. And how you do that is we come on back and we get an area separation line, an area boundary line. And what I'll do is I will just draw another area boundary line. Well, let me just do one from here to here. Okay. Notice that dropped down to 5,000 square feet. And I can put another area over here. Okay, now that's picking up the 2,000 square feet. So I can say that, oh, that's going to be the CEE department. Okay, now the nice thing about these areas is that they're very dynamic. If I go through and move that area boundary, okay, all the numbers update themselves immediately. If I need to go through and change the boundary as I do my planning, because I have some specific idea in mind, no worries. I will just do something like that. Now I can decide. I even ha either have three areas, or if I want to, I can move this back or trim it. That would work too and say, nope, there's really only two areas. All the areas are going to belong to one of those two spaces. 
Okay, so there's this exercise of just trying to figure out what things belong to what areas. Okay, let's go ahead, let me zoom on out. We'll kind of keep on subdividing our space a little bit. I'm going to do another area boundary. Oh, let's just break off this wing of the building over here. Again, it's a little forgiving, so don't worry if you can exactly. I'll say there's an area over there. And I can say that this one over here is going to go to product design. So what am I doing? At a high level, I'm just allocating the spaces without actually doing the detailed design of the walls right now. Just trying to figure out, really, I've got so many things I have to put in this, put in this five pound sack. Just really, what's an overall strategy for how I can organize the space before I go through? So it's, it's kind of top down as opposed to bottom up. Okay. <coughs> Now, once we go through and we design find some areas, these legends are very helpful. Let me go ahead and use one of those. That's an area legend. I can put that out here. Oh, it's going to be by gross building area. Let me go ahead and say OK. But we're going to change that in just a minute. We don't really want to show this legend based on the gross building area, because that's all considered building area. What we're going to do is edit the scheme a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go through here, and I'm going to edit this scheme. So instead of being by gross building area, let me do it by the <coughs> name. Okay. So now I can sort of do it so that the CEE versus the product design versus the unallocated are sort of showing up there. And again, as I go through and move those boundaries, the areas will keep on reshaping and everything will kind of stay in track with each other. Okay, so far so good? Perfect, okay. As you go through and you start doing this to the additional floors, you'll have more and more views. Yes? So the corridor doesn't include the walls? Actually, the coloring does include the walls. It's just sort of hidden underneath the walls right now. I think if we did a wireframe, it would probably show, but it does. The area really is to the purple boundary. Okay. Let's go ahead, let me close the hidden views. And I'll close up some other ones. Let's go through now and create a schedule because doing this all graphically is okay, but often we want to have a schedule that tabulates all this stuff together and really shows it in a very compact form. Okay, so a schedule would look like this. If I want to go through and create a schedule, it's under the view tab and there's all my schedules. And I'm going to do a schedule slash quantities. Okay, and this is how I create window schedules, door schedules. Any of those things come out of the same place. One of the things I can schedule is gross building areas. <coughs> so what I'll do is, oh, let me go ahead and put the names in there. I can put the level so I know what level the space is on. Let me put the area in there, the perimeter if I want to. But that's probably enough to get going. And then what I could do is, if I want to group that by the different names and put a footer underneath it, maybe put a ground total in. And I can even sort of do a total on the areas. So again, what I do is I put the fields in. I can adjust the order. I like to often group things. I don't like just long, flat lists of all the information. So I'm going to sort them out by name. That'll be unallocated versus CEE versus product design. So I'll sort of subtotal the areas for each group, and then I'll also go through and put the grand total in there. And then finally, I just said, for the area, let's calculate the total on that. That'll do the, uh, the, the summation of the area field. So I get something that looks like this. CEE has some space on level one. Product design has some space. Unallocated has some space. Let me come back over. Let me uh, tile those so we can get them in side by side. So again, these are dynamic. If I go through and move this, you'll see the numbers change accordingly. So unallocated got some more space. Oh, but we're going to take it back and give it to the CEE <laughs> department. Let me cancel that. What happened that it wouldn't let me join? Oh, 
In that case, it just broke the line. I was going to put that line back in. Okay, now we're back. Okay, so you can play this game and at a high level, I like a space. Yes, Faison. You have two spaces right now. I was defining area of spaces, and then I put on C, and then I delete it. But for some reason, it's still showing up in my schedule. Does it show as not placed? It shows as not placed. Ah, very good. If you have something, and it's possible, sometimes we put an area in, then we eliminate enough boundaries that it really doesn't exist anymore. Okay, mm -hmm. but it keeps the object around. What you need to do, as far as I'm, actually, I'll show you. It's like here. There it is. Like CEE is not placed right now. I can either go through, and the reason it's not placed is I took out that wall, so it's really there's really two areas that are occupying the same space right now. Okay, only one can really be there. So what we need to do is as follows. I could either go to this row and say delete the row. I can show the row. Actually, since it's not hiding, yeah. for the other one, I'll show that one. I can hide that one. I can isolate that one. Oops, let me switch back to show. Okay, so I could either delete that out, or what would happen is if I go back and if I put those separation lines back in, I need to be in this one. And then I can say over here, give me back the area boundary line. Come over here. I'll put that area boundary back in. Oh, that's interesting. It doesn't automatically reassociate it. So what I think I have to do is actually go through and delete this one. I've really lost it. But now I'll go back in and put another area into the space. I have to be in that plan view in order to do that area. I'll put it over there. Notice it shows up over here. You can, if you prefer, edit things in the table views. And it's actually much easier to edit things in the table views as opposed to selecting everyone individually. So I can just go ahead and say that's CEE. Okay, and it'll pick up that designation. The tables are always showing live data out of the database. So you can just go through and do that. Maybe they have dash lines in the blue, but not anywhere else. Oh, that's only because in product design, it's the one that's selected right now. Okay, so if I come over here to unallocated or CEE, it's just trying to help you uh, coordinate between the views. Yes? So what you do to create a new area schedule is go to view. I mean, to create the schedule or just to get it two side by side? Uh, yeah, so schedules, and then you create a schedule of gross building areas. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do the same thing for level two. I'll go back up to level two, phase one, or phase two, excuse me. Okay. Here I am hanging around. Let me create an area plan. <coughs> Again, I can go back to home, area, create an area plan. I again will create a gross area plan this one for level two. Notice level one isn't showing right now because it says do not uh, duplicate existing views. I could turn that off if I want to create a separate area plan for level one. Okay, But for right now, to, to, to subdivide it by a different uh, uh, categorization scheme. Okay, For right now, I'm going to leave it just as it is. I'll say no again. Here's my level two area plan. As a starting point, I will just put all the, or actually, I have to put the boundaries on it first. Let me quickly draw some boundaries. In this case, I'm going to leave out the space of the balcony. Okay, so I've created the boundary. I can then allocate this. I'll say that as a starting point, it is all just unallocated. Element properties, I'll call it all unallocated. OK, 
Okay, if you want to show the same color fill, I'll just bring the legend back out. And I think it's that one now. There we go. It's all unallocated right now. If I look at the schedule now, let me close that view and we tile all these views. Okay. I now have unallocated on floor one and floor two. If I wanted to give all that unallocated to oh civil engineering, I could. If I wanted to give all that unallocated uh, or oops, I actually grabbed the wrong one. I meant to give all that unallocated on level two to civil engineering. Okay, there's level one and level two. So now they pick up the CEE color. Okay. If I want to subdivide that space, again, what I need to do is get to the area plan. Home, area separation, area boundary. I'll break that into two spaces, and I can allocate part of that. Sure. And that's actually an issue of in your scheduling. So let's take a look at your schedule. In your schedule, even for this thing, I can say, uh, let me go ahead and I'll rename this one to be by department. What I'll do is I'll duplicate that one. And for this one instead, let me rename it to be by level. And this is sort of, I'm just putting it as two so I could actually keep it sort of sorted out both ways, which I should have taken off the copy of. Okay, then in terms of the sorting, let's see, look at the view properties. And it's in the sorting right here. So instead I can sort them by level first and then go ahead and sort them by uh, the name. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, if you do even more, you'll have sublevels within sublevels within sublevels. So you can't go further. So create the different sort of schedules you need, whether you want to think about things by level or whether you want to think about by department. That's all okay. So area schedules, you know, it's pretty much create an area plan, subdivide it, create the objects, and tabulate. And really, the first part of your assignment is really to go through and do that to the second building, just breaking up the space between some proposed allocation between the different departments. So you can sort of make sure that you have <coughs> 5,000 square feet for this department and 4,000 square feet for that department. Okay. Again, we haven't put any walls in there yet. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and put those in a little bit later. Okay. But as a starting point, just come up with an overall scheme for how to allocate the space. And then we'll go back and put the walls in. Okay. A slight deviation on that before the break is to show you what an area plan looks like that is the other type, which is a rentable area plan. Let's kind of show you what that looks like ever so briefly. I'll say okay to that. In rentable area plans, a very special thing happens. When you put in the area boundary lines, it's actually based on not exactly where you put the line, but it's based on what rules that define how the area line should be placed for you based upon the adjacent occupancies. Okay, that sounds like a real mouthful, but let me demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to put a couple walls in here. I'll just go through and put, I'm going to put some big generic walls in there just so you can sort of see inside. So I'm going to go ahead and put a wall over here. I'm going to go through and put a wall over here. I'm going to go through and put a wall here and there. OK, so I've created some rooms. OK, and I will also go through and put in those area separation lines, or area boundary lines. And I can click on that, click on that. 
Okay, let's zoom in and take a look at what's going on here. You might notice that the area boundary lines do something very strange at the windows. When the, we have an interior space to an exterior space, the line actually seems to follow the inside edge of the wall. But when we get to the windows, you actually get charged for halfway into the window area. Okay? When we get to walls that are separating sort of two interior rooms, okay, it goes ahead and just splits it. So I'm going to pay for half of the inside of the wall. You're going to pay for half of the inside of the wall. Okay, and these guys out here are going to pay for half the interior wall. And that's kind of, these are all BOMA rules. About It's always either you go to the inside face, the outside face, or you split the difference. Okay, let's go through and we'll put a couple areas in there and give them some types and see what difference it makes. So here's an area. Okay, let me zoom on out. I can even put a little legend in here just so we can keep track of what we're doing. I'll say a legend. And we'll say a rentable area. Okay, this is all considered building common area right now. If I go through and choose that area, and I'll choose this one first, and I change its properties, let me make that one of the other types, which is an office. Let me change that one over there. I'm going to change its type also to be an office. Notice as I change from building common area to office, there's not much difference. Okay, Building common area and office, we just split the difference. Let me try something a little bit different. Let's come over to this area, and we'll give it a different sort of designation. Okay, What if it's not an office? Instead, it is something called a floor area. That is sort of area that is shared by everyone on the floor, typically the hallways and the bathrooms and things like that, that everyone has to share. What happens is, notice the boundary moved. The building area actually absorbs all the space. You don't have to pay halfway out to the building area. It all goes into the building area. Okay. Ultimately, you will get charged back. It'll be some overhead on your space. Because someone pays for that, and ultimately everyone pays for it eventually. Okay, but it won't be counted against your square footage. You'll only be paying for this square footage, not that one. Okay. Another sort of situ situation like that is, and this actually happened to me in a space I was renting once. Got to do a sort of a big snit with uh, the building manager over how they were trying to allocate some space. Every once in a while, you have things like this, where there's this little hole in the space okay? that's often there oh, for like a, a duct or something, just something that's sort of uh, penetrating. I'm going to go ahead and sort of divide that into a separate area. Okay? So that might be a piece of duct work or some sort of mechanical space. The issue is really should you get charged for that space? It's not really usable to you. Okay. But it does make a difference. Okay. That type of space is typically considered, let me pop over here, a major vertical penetration. Okay. And notice <coughs> what happens there. The offices don't pay for the major vertical penetrations. Sort of like the floor area, they get charged back to the building as opposed to charged back to you. Now, this may, on the one hand, seem like minutia in terms of that little bit of difference. But actually, when it comes time to go through and tabulate this stuff, this could involve thousands of square feet and just really hundreds of thousands of dollars by the time you really look at a very big complex of buildings. So these rules, building managers are very, very precise about. And they really care about that. That's why there's the two different versions. But what we're going to do, gross building area is A-OK, -okay because we don't sort of subdivide the space using those same rules. Okay, but just be aware of that. If someone starts talking to you about area plans and your areas are different than what they're calculating, ask them, are you using the BOMA rules? Because if they are, okay, a whole different infrastructure is going in place. And you all of a sudden have this issue of which side of the wall you're calculating. It's, it just seems strange that sort of halfway through this wall it jumps or that you're paying for, the, but it is. It makes a big difference to you. Okay, let's go ahead and break for there. Let's. Uh